Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we'll discuss my thoughts on episode 12 of the anime series Oni Hey. And <laughs> this was the first one in this line uh, of episodes in this series where I was actually having to kind of scratch my head during it and had to give it a little thought afterward to, to piece together what the hell was going on. Um, we're very much focusing on one of Heizo Hasegawa's own in the arson theft control, this man by the name of Koyanagi, who, as we see at the start of the episode, he he's, you know, because of his job interfering in his personal life, he's not able to be there for his wife during the birthing of their child. And uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, for the time period it took place in, something that was fairly common was the mother and child dying in childbirth um and this sadly is a fate that befalls his wife and child he only gets there after everything is said and done with the entire arson theft control behind him uh because they're out wrangling up criminals i mean it's a you know it's a job you have to be ready for at any time of, of the given day and night so of course he, he had to deal with this and he could only get there too late to find his wife and baby had passed and uh it's a really depressing situation it's one that instills in Heizo himself he he tells his wife Hasai he's really worried that Koyanagi will now be kind of circling the drain looking for any means to end his own life to reunite one day with his wife and child lost to him and he kind of is he's kind of cruising for a bruising whether that be like a, a confrontation in the streets or you know, wrangling up a, a criminal that might try to take his own life and him letting that befall him. Um, you know, he, he is going to the dojo and practicing against opponents, one of which is Hazo's own son, who Hazo appointed him to that particular dojo to study under the dojo master. Uh, and, and this guy, after going through one other guy, he points to Hazo's son and he gives him a proper ass whooping, just really frustrated and, and having all that pent up, uh, you know, sadness and remorse and guilt and everything like that. I mean, he, he's really downtrodden. It's understandable, but it's, it's really frustrating and sad to see, like he, he feels helpless to the world. Now, presumably we jump ahead a year. Uh, you know, I, I have to assume it's a year later on the anniversary of the deaths of his wife and baby child that he's visiting their graves and he makes a promise to them that he'll be reunited with them soon but upon then following up uh you know going home is he able to save the lives of another young mother and child who are trying to throw themselves off a bridge uh you know commit suicide this because as he would later find out he was responsible for the arrest of her husband this man by the name of matahachi um his wife otaka she she wanted to commit suicide because she found her husband was a thief uh, or at least you know, there's some minced words by one of his benefactors. He had sent a letter to and asked to take care of his wife if anything ever happened to him. Turned out he was only doing a favor for an old friend, uh, which happened to be thievery, where some lives were taken. He was not responsible for the lives being taken. Um, but he's the guy they caught, you know. And so the, the ruination and the ramifications on Otaka and her, her life, it, it just, she did not want to go on with that disgrace, with that dishonor and having to be so ill-fated, you know, uh, not knowing the whole story, unfortunately. And so Koyanagi ends up feeling like in saving this young mother and child that this was fate befalling him, kind of giving him another chance to to be there for a very similar young woman and her child. And it, it takes an interesting turn where this is where I started to sort of scratch my head. He keeps it on the down low. Uh, you know, basically he, he goes to... Matahachi, who is imprisoned, and he says, you know what, this is of my own volition, um, this is my own choice, I'm going to give you the opportunity to make better of yourself, to reunite with your wife, but the catch is, you have to give me the guy who actually did the murdering, uh, you know, during that night of thievery, I understand what your plight was, I understand you were only helping a friend, maybe you didn't know the whole story, you can have a better life. Do you believe, as I do, that this is fate, that I encountered your wife and your child, I was able to save them, and now I'm in a position where I can try to pseudo-save you? And so this guy agrees, somewhat reluctantly, and this is really where I had to start scratching my head. We don't see actively Koyanagi, you know, reunite Matahachi with his wife Otaka, they're walking past the bridge she tried to leap off of. 
And this guy breaks away from Koyanagi and, and jumps in the water not to be seen again. And so the next morning, does Koyanagi have to go back to the arson theft control, face Heizo himself, utterly disgraced of his own accord because he let a thief go, someone who needed to be prosecuted. And he finds himself then incarcerated. Now, we're talking six months goes by, and Hazo doesn't budge an inch. And I'm really, I'm like kind of <laughs> just sitting there taken aback, like, this is really strange. I mean, even Hazo's own people are, are kind of, you know, gossiping in the background. What is Chief thinking? Uh, he, he's got to pass judgment on this guy so, by some means. He's got to do something. He's got to punish him in some way. He's going to get off with this. He, he's not going to be, you know, punished in any way, and... and I'm just like, okay, this is really weird to have all this time pass and, and nobody's doing anything. I'm like, when's the other leg going to drop? How is this going to end? And it kind of ended, you know, somewhat to my surprise that Matahachi made good on his promise. He returned after six months, presumably trying to seek out the man who murdered the people on the night of the crime he was, you know, arrested for, uh, participating in at, at the very least, and he made good. He came back and he had the guy in like a barrel. He brought him. And so, you know, basically Hazo, I guess he never lost faith in one of his own in Koyanagi. He he kept the hope and he kept hoping that, that somehow that fate would intervene again and remove him from having to cast judgment on one of his own of the arson theft control. And, and that's really kind of the only thing I can I can figure out uh, would be his motivation for casting it off for so long just by happenstance he's lucky that ended up playing to be true and as far as Matahachi's motivation I mean he got off scot-free he got freed but I guess you could say that what really drove him was wanting to do better by his own life, as well as the lives of his wife and child, whom presumably he would later be reunited with, after all, um, if he had not been already, thus removing the stigma of his criminal activities from their family, him being able to, you know, presumably return to some kind of job and support his wife and child, and all these things. I mean, it, it, there was a lot of this episode that was kind of left to assumption. And I think that's why I had to really kind of piece it together in my own mind and think about it after the fact. Basically, it was a case of Koyanagi, you know, losing his wife and child, saving the lives of another, you know, young woman and child, and then saving the soul, in a sense, of this man who was just, you know, at the right place in the wrong time trying to help someone, not really knowing what was going on, he very nearly could have been executed for, for you know, being sort of involved in a crime that, uh, you know, where murders were committed, but because he brought the murderer, I have to assume he made better of himself, and, and you know, if he still had any sentencing, if he was still going to be imprisoned for a time, at least he was he was, you know, not fated to be assassinated for his crime as the murderer would presumably, you know, <laughs> have done to himself. So, I mean, it was a very intriguing episode, definitely, and it still falls in line with that sort of noirish, yet, you know, mash, mashed up with feudal Japan aesthetic that this series has gone for in, in its stories, yet it just felt like there was some further explanation needed, perhaps. Um... Because, you know, it seemed like the focus was twofold and, and maybe something was lost in translation just a tad because of that. Because, of course, we're, we're focusing on Koyanagi and his time in prison and, and the mistakes he made in his own life after suffering such an ill fate a, a year, you know, hence. And being able to, again, save the lives of this young woman and child. But really, it was about him making good on himself in saving a family for the family lost to him. And and having so much focus on Marahachi, you know, you feel for this guy. He, he was unfortunately saddled up with a crime, whether he knew what was happening or not, uh, according to his one, uh, you know, dispatcher who goes to his wife and, and gives her the letter and says, you know, your husband has been thieving for a while. There, there's really 
no certainty whether or not that's true. It seems as though Heizo is under the same impression that Koyanagi is. You know, follow your instincts. Matahachi's not that type of person. He's not that type of criminal. He would not murder. He was caught up in a, in a crime that involved murder, and maybe we can get the murderer. And that outweighs what, you know, what role Matahachi had in all that. Um, so again, by the end, I mean, I don't know for sure whether they let Matahachi go and he can reunite with his wife, whether he remains incarcerated, uh, not to be, you know, killed for his crimes because he didn't actually murder anyone. And his wife would then be able to visit him until he can be released. If there's ever such a time that that will happen. Um, I just, I really don't know those aspects of how this would continue on, but that's where the focus shifts back to Koyanagi, who, you know, Heizo never lost faith in. He he felt, you know, there was a reason this guy was working for him in the first place, and he didn't want to jump the gun. It took six months <laughs> for it to finally, you know, that other leg to drop for, for his trust and faith in Koyanagi to, to come to fruition. And that kind of mind boggled me a little bit, but um, thankfully it did, and, and things seemingly, you know, all's well that ends well by the end. But it did perplex me <laughs> while watching it. I had to really think about it for a little bit after the fact to, to come to those conclusions. And, um, you know, it, it, it was probably, I would say, uh, the least satisfying episode out of the entire series just for that fact, just for, you know, they, they didn't leave the story plain stated by the end. You kind of had to piece together in your mo own mind some of those aspects, but it was still enjoyable, and uh, it, it in no way disparages how much I love and enjoy this series. So uh, I was also actually surprised. I thought this was the final episode of the season. Turns out we got one more next week, and uh, that promises it looks to be very interesting as well so uh bring that one on if you've seen this episode i'd love to hear from you in the comments below what you thought of it if you had the same kind of issues i did with it did you think the episode was alternatively uh, uh very plain stated where you know did you find it easy to follow and things of that sort did you have to think about it like i did anything goes in the comments below love it or hate it just love having that conversation otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this hope this video finds you well and i'll catch you all later peace